Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmulkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And on today's episode, we're going to answer the question, what are microglia and what is their involvement in neuroinflammation? And microglia are one of the support cells of the brain. The neurons are the electrical producing cells um, that send signals so that we can uh, see what we see, hear what we hear, and do what we do. Um, the glia or uh, glial cells are the support cells, which there are more glia cells in the brain than other cells, like neurons. And they, they support the brain in multiple functions, whether that be building the blood-brain barrier, um, clearing out dead organisms, um, or uh, controlling electrolyte balance and stuff like that. Microglia specifically are a immune cell and they are very similar to the macrophages of the immune cells that are within our body. Um, microglia are designed to basically respond to infections, respond to damaged cells, to maybe create inflammation and clear out damaged cells, clear out infections that might be in the brain. So they do contribute to neuroinflammation. But microglia also have a very important role in early life processes. So from birth to de neurodevelopment. Um, and there are also differences between male and female microglia. So I wanna discuss a paper um, and we'll get right into the paper here. Um, this paper is called Microglia Function Across Spectrum of Age and Gender by Jillian Nissen um, from 2017 in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences. So if we look at the abstract, um, basically recent studies have delved into the role of maintaining homeostasis in a healthy brain. So basically microglia, although they're the immunocompetent cells of the central nervous system of the brain and spinal cord, and they can mount an inflammatory response, they also have an important role in maintaining homeostasis. Um, there's increasing evidence that microglial responses can vary greatly among individuals, and this review here will describe the change in behavior of microglia from development and birth all the way through an aged brain, um, and how uh, not only age that impacts the state of the neuroimmune system, as microglia has shown to play a role uh, in the sexual differentiation of the brain as well. So if we get into the introduction, uh, pretty simple here, microglia cells are generally in a resting state, a resting state where they are constantly looking out and scavenging, they're monitoring the, the brain's microenvironment um, for pathogens, for damage, uh, and then they can rapidly respond in these local disturbances so they can survey the entire brain within about an hour, um, which is pretty cool. And um, basically outside their roles as the immune system, they are involved in modulating synaptic plasticity. So they help to improve synaptic plasticity as they not only monitor synapses, but they are responsible for the vital developmental processes of synaptic pruning. So we're actually born with more synapses, born with more connections between cells, um, but sometimes uh, those more connections result in too much stimuli coming in uh, and not enough direct efficient control. And so microglia help to actually prune or take away some of those synapses to help strengthen the ones that are good um, and active. Okay, so we'll go right to page five. Okay, so you have basically prenatal or perinatal uh, microglia, you have an adult microglia, then you have an aged microglia. So in a prenatal, the endogenous condition, so what's actually happening, um, what the microglia actually do, they promote vessel sprouting. Um, so basically they promote the blood vessel sprouting um, to different areas. They mediate CNS rewiring, so that's what I was just mentioning. They prune the complement tagged synapses. So what happens, the immune system will kind of say like, hey, this, this synapse isn't really necessary anymore. Um, it's not doing anything for the function of the um, connections between cells and the function of the brain. So let's reduce it, let's take it away. 
and they reduce levels of synaptic adhesion molecules. So this is really important in synaptic plasticity. This is how um, a child can go from um, having very difficulty trying to grab a toy or grab an object uh, because they're not able to completely coordinate their hand uh, with the eye-hand coordination with their fingers uh, to then being able to grab it, move it, manipulate it. It's because of this synaptic process of pruning. Um, pathological conditions though is if there's not enough uh, going on, there's diminished axonal extensions. So basically they don't they, they, they don't have uh, the axonal extensions occurring. This may occur due to LPS or basically bacterial uh, activation. Okay, in an adult, the microglia are actively surveying the brain. Okay, they are they're functional phagocytes. Okay, so basically, um, if a cell is dying or damaged um, and it doesn't need to be around, it's not doing any good, um, the microglia can phagocytose it or basically eat the cell uh, and then recycle its nutrients for other cells. Um, and then, sorry about this. Um, and they're also looking at the, they have these long ramified processes um, that help to identify these areas, okay? Um, under pathological conditions though, it undergoes activation that leads to this chronic inflammatory or production of inflammatory molecules, inflammatory factors. So they recruit immune cells from the periphery, other macrophages, uh, other immune cells. They detect damage through uh, PRRs, uh, which is pathogen receptor activation. Um, but they also do help resolve neuroinflammation as well as an adult uh, microglial cell. They help to activate the immune system to get rid of pathogens, to get rid of damaged cells that might cause inflammation, but then they are involved in resolving inflammation as well. And then finally, in the age state, um, they actually have this chronic, mild, chronic inflammatory state. Um, they're increased micro microglial numbers. They're dystrophic, so they're basically, they look weird, they look abnormal. Um, they don't do phagocytosis very well, and they're generally more primed. They're more primed for activation. So at this age, this is where um, a concussion may lead to more of an inflammatory state. Uh, uh, worse diet, which already is producing inflammation, may lead to more of an inflammatory state. Uh, pathological conditions, they have slower processes, motility migration. Um, they kind of sit around at injury sites for longer, therefore possibly producing more inflammation. They don't resolve the neuroinflammation well. Um, there's increased expression of inflammatory factors and impaired response to the anti-inflammatory factors. So this is where it is important in an aged brain that we focus even more on diet, focus more on anti-inflammatory methods to work on decreasing this chronic microglial activation, chronic inflammatory state. Um, okay, so then they talk about some sex differences. Um, it's not a whole lot, but right here is where it is. So basically, female microglia are more likely to produce these uh, cytokines that are more inflammatory, high inflammation, and less likely to produce PG2, which is more anti-inflammatory. While male microglia are more likely to produce the higher anti-inflammatory factor and not the inflammatory factor. Um, so this is really interesting considering a male and female predominance. Maybe this is why females are more likely to get neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. Um, the predominant phenotype is more inflammatory and activated versus the predominant phenotype in males is more resting and anti-inflammatory. Uh, hormone receptors are different on each, uh, like these are just estrogen receptors, and then the effect on brain structures are also a little bit different. Um, so if we come back together, um, this article just really shows what microglia are, which I like, and then <clears throat> gives you a description of what the point of them are, or what, how, how they're involved in the inflammatory process. Because if we look at different people, uh, whether it be male or female or age, uh, whether it be young or old, we can do things when it comes to diet and activity to decrease um, neuroinflammation by decreasing the activation state of microglia. 
Um, this is especially important for people who are more likely to have risk of concussion, risk of traumatic brain injury, um, risk of, of things that can also activate these microglia. Um, and if we can control our diet, control what we're eating, control our environmental influences, um, whether that be being around uh, a lot of pollution and toxins, that can help to lessen the neuroinflammatory effect of microglia in, at, at any age. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thanks again and have a great day. Stay healthy.